Hey everybody, Dave Clark, aka The Pattern Guy. Hey, uh, sorry for a little bit of an absence. Um, like I said, the one video I'm one for, I share everything. Uh, I won't try to get too personal. Like, I had a little bit of an accident, and I'll talk about it. Nothing huge, but uh, it's one of the things, you know, just the stupid things you don't think of, right? So, uh, it's raining out a couple weeks ago, and there was some stuff in the back of the pickup truck I had to get out. So, I stepped up on the wheel to lean over to get the stuff out of the back of the truck. Sl uh, foot slipped out, and boom right across the back of the pickup truck so I guarantee I got some broken ones in there it, I hadn't had pain like this forever so kind of been down and out for a little bit but the reason I'm sharing this too is uh, you know just watch what you do you know it's the, you gotta think of things and you know I was in a hurry and uh, just you know being lazy instead of opening the tailgate climbing and getting the stuff out you know just did it the lazy way okay so back today, I'm still not functioning great. I'm, I'm still uh, hurting. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little project. It's going to be a wood project. Um, later on down the line, we're going to, you know, cast some. But these are going to be uh, cast in iron. So uh, like I said, my one um, buddy, um, I don't know if he'll let us film down at his foundry. Hopefully it will. But if not, we'll get the finished product out. And uh, but it's it's a type of powder making. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to do is make a, a pouring ladle. I'm going to make a rectangular pouring ladle, and I'll show you how we we get to the uh, the easiest way to do that. Okay. Um, another thing, uh, like I said, I didn't start this channel to sell things all the time on here. I'm going to have some stuff for sale. Um, one of the things uh, I decided to do. When I bought all my equipment, uh, foundry equipment, I was uh, I bought two Speedy Melt um, furnaces. I probably should have got the model number of it. I decided to sell one of them because uh, I don't have room enough down the foundry to hook it up, and it's been sitting down there. We've been tripping over it, so. I'm gonna go ahead and sell that. I'll put a couple pictures up. I believe this one you can melt. Uh, same as the other one. I got the bigger one hooked up. This one's smaller. Um, it, I'll get the model number for it. We'll, we'll try to get the model number for it. But it's uh, this one I believe you can melt. Brass, bronze, aluminum in there. I believe you can melt like, I think it's around 30 or 40 pounds of, of brass or bronze and that. And then aluminum would be like two thirds less than that. But the, the crucibles are about you know maybe six inches by nine inches something like that so it's a nice little furnace i've never used it when i bought it i was talking to the shop teacher he said it was working when you know all stuff was in top notch um my uh the bigger one that i have it's been working pretty good you know i think we had some moisture issues down there some of the uh um, electronics on the ignition and, and that was kind of messed up but all the parts are still available there's a company called Mifco uh, you get all the parts from it they're you know electronics are a little bit more expensive nowadays but if you're an electronics guy figure it out what I did with the big one on mine I just bypassed all of it because a bunch of safety things on it because it was in a school so I just have it right now where we'll throw a lit piece of paper in there turn the gas on and then I got the blower on a switch. That, that's how, I mean, you could do something like that too on there. But um, I'll, I'll put that on, on the video and uh, take a look at it. If anybody's interested out of there uh, on it, let me know and uh, get the furnace out to you. So we're going to start working on this ladle. Um, what we're going to do, let me do a little, it's not a chalk talk video, but what, what we're going to do is we got, we're going to make a rectangular box. Okay, so we're going to make the wall thickness of this um jumping ahead of myself a little bit okay uh when you do pouring ladles or like um yeah, like a steel melt or a metal melting crucible okay see a lot of bad guys do it grab a piece of steel pipe or something weld something on the bottom those are fine but the problem is every time you heat and cool the steel 
you lose some of it starts scaling off and that so the best metal crucibles and ladles to use and um, ingot molds and that are iron so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna make some iron ingot molds okay so I want to keep the what we're gonna do is make the wall thickness about 5 16 of an inch on this so we're just gonna get some 5 16 material out so it's gonna you know we're gonna put plenty of draft on it yeah, let's do this backwards okay I'm gonna make something that's gonna look like something like this okay all right and then we're gonna put a handle on it something real basic all right we'll have like 5 16 wall thickness all right so instead of just getting some 5 16 material out you know and you know say it's like two inches high or whatever try to glue that together it's um you're not going to be as accurate and everything so what we're going to do is i'm just going to build a little block that's the inside size all right i'm just going to make a little block out of pine it's cheap uh this one's not so accurate if i'm doing a real accurate pattern i take a chunk of mahogany and make whatever the inside shape is and then you just add you know your 5 16 stock you know to the outside of it so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some stock together real quick off camera and then uh once we get that i'll show you the block that i made and um we get some stock on. I'll show you how to make the block. It's not not a not rocket science, but we'll we'll do that too. So let me get some wood together, and uh, we'll get back with you. Okay, guys. Uh, what we're gonna do here is I just grabbed a scrap piece of wood. All right. So this is a scrap piece of pine. I know when you're first starting out, you guys don't have that many scrap pieces and that and that. But I'm just doing this to show you. Um, and a lot of guys want to make ingot molds that, you know, when you pour it to the top with aluminum, it's exactly two pounds or whatever. We're just going to make some ingot molds, okay? Um, so I found this piece that is already thickness plain, okay? Um, you want a lot of draft in these things to have the ingots pop out. I, uh, 10 degrees, I just eyeballed it. So I got a 10 degree side I'm starting with, okay? Um, I'm not going to use a shrink rule with this, you know, we're making them cast iron. Could you use an eighth inch shrink rule, but like I said, I'm just, we're just going to make these whatever. All right, so I got a straight side, starting out with a straight side. Just going to take my square and get another straight side. All right, put my mark on here. And then, like I said, no big deal. I'm just going to measure approximately what I think would look like a good looking and get you know for what we want to do okay and i'm just going to do this seven inches all right put a square line so it'll be seven inches long okay and then get something that looks like a good width maybe like four inches okay so i'm gonna put a four inch mark here get my pencil line so i don't lose that and get my thumb gauge out or marking gauge Okay, get another straight line. Put that on there. All right, so I just got a basic rectangle. Okay, and this is like what I said. This is just going to be my block to build my pattern on. Okay, and this is exactly what the ingot will look like when we're done. Okay, I'm going to cut this out on the bandsaw, go over to sand or sand it. And then I'll show you how to start, uh, we'll, we'll go from there to show you how to start wrapping this and making a mold here, all right? Be back in a minute. Bandsaw, cut the uh, sides off, and then went over to sand or sand them. Okay, um, I'll do a thing on the bandsaw one of these days, but um, when I'm doing pine, especially pine clogs a lot of stuff up because of all the resin in it. I'll show you. I tilt the uh, bandsaw table on the angle that I got to cut, and it saves on the sander. You don't want to 
And if you don't have one that, that tilts, obviously you're not going to be able to do it. But um, you know, try to do it so you have less seam and so you don't clog the sander. Okay. So this is basically what an ingot will look like when we're done. All right. Um, I chamfered all the corners on here except for the face. We're going to lay this down and start building a pattern up. Okay. Um, I chamfered all these corners not because in the ingot mold we are going to, you know, when we do this, right, we're going to uh, eventually, we're going to have our wall thickness. We want to round the corners in here, okay? We'll do that. All right. And that's so that the ingot will pop out if we had. The square corners, it's just more friction for, um, you know, the ingot to come out, or not come out, I should say. Get into a little physics with pattern making too, believe it or not, just basic stuff. But anyhow, I came for the corners in here not to make the rounds in here. We'll do that with the fillet. I'll show you how to do that in um, the bondo. Okay, I did this because what we're going to do is, the next step is we're going to cut some 5 16th material out and we're going to wrap this with a 5 16 material. All right, so we're going to have to glue the edges. So, you know, if you guys glued stuff up before, you know, glue's going to seep through the, the cracks, right? So I don't want to glue that to this block, all right? So everywhere where the corner comes together, right in here, you know, the, we don't want the glue seeping through and sticking to this block. So chamfering all the edges will alleviate that or it should you, you know and inevitably some glue gets through somewhere but this should help a lot okay so the next step is i'm going to go get some uh, 5 16 inch um this is going to be a pattern for myself uh yeah i'm trying to make things that'll last i might make you know if i do more of these down the road i might make a plastic pattern you know, depending on it, but I'm just gonna make it out of mahogany right now. You don't have to. Probably the best thing, I should probably make it out of poplar, but I don't have that much poplar right now. So I'm just gonna get some mahogany out real quick and start wrapping this. I'll show you how to do it. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, next step in this project is we're gonna start wrapping this block, okay? Like I said, I'm gonna have 5 16 thick uh, cast iron around here, okay? So I went over to the thickness planer got this down to 5 16 all right i put a 10 degree edge on there we're at 10 degrees right so i want this you know if it was square we don't want it up straight so we got it on 10 degrees so it's gonna you know lean against here okay? so here's a couple ways we could do this all right i can take my measuring stick um it's a little different since it's on an angle okay I, i'm not usually if I get a height measurement, I just use my square. All right, get a height measurement. We're not gonna be able to do that with this because like I said, remember it's gonna go over. So it's actually, we're gonna need it a little bit longer, right? So a couple ways you could do it, you know, you could just plane out measure. Um, what you could do is get a little straight edge here. I got this little straight edge here. All right, so I could measure it this way. All right, or what you can do is, here's a little thing you guys can make at home really, really easy. It's easy if you have a sander, but this is, it's called a mouse, okay? So what this is, is just a little piece of maple. And what I did, got a scrap piece of maple, and then I pounded a nail in it where it was almost breaking out to the bottom, okay? Then you take it over the sander, you sand the bottom until it hits the nail. All right, and then you sand a point on it. You want to make a point on this, all right? So I got my nice straight edge down on the bottom here, all right? And then that nail is on the same plane, all right? So what I can do is I'll get my 10 degree side down here, all right? And then I'll take my mouse and just make a mark. Okay, it's kind of like a marking gauge, but you're... It, you know, you get it off the same height as what you're using right here, okay? Another thing you can do, this is like a 5 16 just a regular high-speed uh, tool bit, lathe tool bit, okay? I just sharpened a point on this, and, and you know, same thing. 
just flip this up you know I can make a mark um, these I actually have several different so I got some real long ones sometimes I'll do bigger work you know and you want to be able to get a line on something that might be far away or something you can extend it out or real handy real easy to make I mean it's, it's cost you literally nothing to make okay cost you a nail and a piece of scrap all right so we do that I got a mark on here and what I'll do is I mean you, you could I could just do the whole length one way I could do it okay just keep on moving it down do the whole length or you can get your marking gauge we'll just keep on doing this all right instead of using the marking gauge actually if you use the marking gauge on this too doing this way um, you're on a 10 degree angle so it, it it probably be easier just to do it this way all right so I got my line where I got to cut off okay so now what this is this should be enough for a long side and, and a leg all right so what we got to do next is um let's let's flip this upside down i keep on losing everything here don't put everything right here so what we'll do here's our block on a 10 degree angle all right, so we got our piece that's 5 sixteenths of an inch wide, 10 degrees here. I got to put 10 degrees on that and two, all right? So if you look, you know, if we'll turn this around this way, all right? So I'm negative 10 degrees on one side, positive on the other. Okay, that's something you got to remember that all the time. All right, it's the opposite angle. So I'm positive, that's where I got my mark, I'm positive on one side, so when I cut this out, that'll be to the negative, right? So I'll go do that for you, we'll be right back. Okay, next step guys, we got side pieces to the height, okay? What we did was when I got my board out for this, you know, I made it so that it was long enough where I could get one of the longer sides and the short side out of each piece, all right? So we did that, all right, my two side pieces, two end pieces. All right, the way I like to do things, it's a little like um, you learn it in carpentry and everything, how you assemble things, all right? So the way I always do things, if uh, you watched how I made the flask, I do the ends first, okay? You do the smaller ends first, so we'll cut those to the exact width, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a piece up here, and um, same thing, I'm just going to use my mouse, okay, and, you know, hold this on tight and that's backward. That would help, right? Okay. Um, I'm just going to use my mouse and I'm going to mark the length of what I need. Okay, now this cut here, it's going to be a square cut. Okay, so I'm going to cut these off sand them and everything i'll be right back all right guys okay guys back in we got the two ends cut to, to length all right so one of the things i forgot to tell you when we especially as a powder maker you know furniture makers do it too okay but it, it's really important that we label the things that we do okay when i cut this out i'm usually fairly accurate but this end might be a little bigger than this end or, or whatever so when i you know fit this piece on here and use the mouse you know i got my my bn and i got an an okay labeled you know bn here bn here a a okay now here's another trick you do all right i don't know where you get these anymore I know Freeman should should uh, be able to get them at Freeman. There's little brads, you call them brads, okay? They're little nails, all right? I know you can't get them at the depot and all that stuff anymore. Uh, probably get them online. My dad, um, him and Ellen were going to start a pattern shop, so they started just, you know, collecting a bunch of stuff. So I have a lot of things that I, I don't know where some of the stuff comes from anymore. I'm sure you can get them online. Um, but what one of the tricks is okay is we got the length here okay so I'm just going to use a piece of this put this where 
the side we use the side piece okay side piece is coming in here and this is gonna butt up against here all right and then I'll just you know hammer this pin in and it'll be where it's got to be all right I got it started okay I always get them started because try to hold all this stuff it's not gonna happen okay so when I get this side piece I'm gonna hold it really good just butt this end piece in okay and then Pack it in. You don't have to drive it all the way through. I want to pull this out later. Okay, so I just got it in there. That's not going to go anywhere. Okay, another thing I'm, I'm rambling ahead again. Okay, so I'll show you the reason why we make this block. All right, so I got my two side pieces and the end piece. All right, so if I try to just put these together here, right, where am I? You know, I don't know if I'm square. Or what I mean it, it it should be pretty good but this way you know I'm perfectly square and everything I, I know where I'm at with these blocks all right so I'm gonna put start a braid on this end okay doesn't matter where you put it just put it in, got it in the middle easiest way put a side piece on butt my end piece up there boom okay I don't know if you can see why I got the chamfer on, see there's a little hole there, so when I put glue on here, if glue seeps in there, it's not going to stick to this block, hopefully. It doesn't always work out that way. Alright, um, get my glue. So all you got to do is put a little bit of glue on each side. Okay, I'm just going to do all four pieces right off the bat. Okay, like I said, it's going to take you a little bit to figure out how much glue you put on things. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get there, but if you don't put more than, than little, cause it'll just seep out. Um, another thing I'm looking at, forgot to tell you, like I said, there's just so much information on this stuff and it, it's, I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Okay. When you say, when I sanded these end pieces on the sander, okay, it leaves a little bit of a burr. All right. So you just take a piece of sandpaper. You know, you got to sand those off because that, that, that might, you know, that burr might get in between the wood, right? So you don't want that. All right, so I'm just going to stick these on here just like that, okay? And then I get the outside of my box. Um, like I said, I'm making kind of a master pattern here. So um, it, it's going to be kind of hard to clamp these. I'm not going to clamp it. I'm going to put a piece on top, and we're going to take the auto bondo and make the fillets inside so that will help me, you know, uh, keep this so this this is like I don't have to make this rugged that rugged of a pattern Okay, so it's just just a mash or kind of make it a little bit light duty I guess you'd say all right So the other thing is I got a piece for the top here when these dry a little bit We'll cut these ends off a little bit put a piece on the end and Then when it's done, I'll pull those nails out and take it on the sander and sand it all around what I'm going to start doing while well, this is sitting here, i got to make a handle for this thing. So I'm going to go get some stock for a handle and we'll get going on the handle. Alright, and be right back again. Okay guys, we'll wait for the glue to dry on these end pieces, right? I got a piece of, um, just found a little piece of scrap mahogany. Alright, we're going to make start shaping the handle, okay? Like I said, this, I'm doing this project, you know, I, I've got a couple of, um, you know, homemade ingot molds made out of steel. You've seen them. I'm going to make actually some more of them too. Um, but the cast iron ones are just, they're, they're way better. Um, as I was saying before, I think, uh, you know, every time you heat the steel up, it, it degrades the steel in that. So eventually the, the, they'll not be as good. So cast irons will be, be, be mint forever. Okay. So <clears throat> um, the reason I'm really doing this project, I really don't need them, is I'm just trying to show you you know one of the processes we do on you know how to make you know square box shaped uh, patterns and that okay um, and, and then, like I said this would be a master again too okay so I just got this um, no rhyme or reason you know I'm just gonna be making it like seven inches long um, I may make it a little longer uh, you know you should have gloves on when you do this stuff but you know it be a little bit longer handle so your hands away from the hot metal Okay, so I'm going to do this, um, you know, just make a regular shape handle, okay. Uh, I'm going to do this 
All right, uh, let's do it this way. All right, say it's parting line. I'm gonna do this a little bit lazy way. Eventually down the road, I wanna make some real nice ones of these. I wanna make a handle where it's round all the way around. But for this particular project, we're just gonna make one of the sides gonna be flat back. All right, so say here's our ingot mold. All right, sitting down on your, your parting here. Okay, so we're gonna make a handle comes off of here. It's kind of like a traditional handle. Okay, something like that. All right, like I said, eventually I want to do it all the way around, but that's gonna have to be cored. All right, I, I just don't want to do it for this because I'm just showing you how to do this. Okay, so this one, I'm, I'm not a great artist. I can't do things freehand too well. You know, mechanical stuff, I'm, I'm pretty good at. All right, so. This one, this particular part right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and freehand something. All right, so, you know, let's flip this over. I'm not gonna draw the whole thing. Just draw the handle part. Okay, so you want it a little skinnier down here and then flare it out. You know, something like this. Okay, well, here it's both, I gotta do something both sides, okay? So I know everybody's done this. Um, I'm just gonna take a piece of paper. I folded it in half like you did and I think kindergarten we did this right all right and I'm gonna just cut this out okay and like I said this isn't a it's just something to show you guys it's not a pattern I mean you could probably lay this out and make it perfect but for demonstration purposes okay open it up Okay, here, there's my handle. Okay, so we'll make that, like I said, just this side. It's got to be one side. So I'm going to freehand that side. All right, you're, you're not going to be able to see my lines on this block. I already have this shape laid out. I just did it by hand. Okay, so 90 degrees. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to put the side that I just did on there we'll trace it out and then I'm going to show you what and how to do this there's a little I'm not going to say so much a trick I mean it's basically the way you, you got to do it okay so you're we got to cut two sides out right okay so um, the way this is I can't cut the one side out and then sand it all and then flip it and cut the other side out because we already cut things on the opposite side right so it's not going to sit flat on the bandsaw table and that so this is what you do typically for carving okay like I said you're not going to be able to see it so what, what we're going to do is um, Okay, here's my board here, all right? I'm gonna make this. All right, so what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna go on the bandsaw, and I'm gonna cut up into here, okay? And then I'm gonna leave a little bit here, all right? So then what I'm gonna do, then I'll flip it, and then this profile is gonna be on the other side, I'll be able to cut that side all the way off, okay? And then these, they'll just finish popping off. And then I'm not going to have a true line to sand. You can put your template back on so you'll have a true line to sand. But like I said, this is, it's not a pattern. It's, or a, it's a pattern, but it's not, a, uh, it's not something I'm selling. It's just a demonstration for you guys. So you don't have to get nuts on it. It's a ladle handle, okay? You don't have to get nuts on it. All right, so let me go cut this out a bit, and I'll uh, cameraman had to take a take a leave, so I'll I'll try to show you the steps and, and how I get this. Be right back, guys. Okay, real quick, a little different than this. I'm not wide enough. I went to the outside, so I just came up to here. Okay, so I still have my picture of what I got to cut out on this side. So I'm gonna go cut this out. And then I'll uh, give you a show of what it looks like. Alright, be right back. Okay guys, I cut the one side profile out. Like I said, I left these two pieces on so that I had that drawing right. So those will just pop off. Okay. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the oscillating spindle sander and just sand this up, make it look halfway decent. Like I said, it's just the handle doesn't have to be perfect, all right? So I'll get over there, I'll do that, and I'll show you what I got when I'm done. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, guys, uh, while I was away here, I put the lid on the box, okay? Um, left that over there. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but in the corners, you see glue in there, okay? That's why I chamfered the corners on that block, okay? So that block didn't stick. It, the block just popped right off, right? So this is perfectly square, all right, to the depth I want it and everything. Okay, next thing I got to do with this, traditionally, you know, the, the uh, corners are rounded off. Usually before I round the corners off, because I'm going to put some pretty good radiuses on these things. Before I round the corners off, I want to have some nice fillets on the inside. So I'm going to take care of the fillets first before I do that, get some extra strength to this. Because like I said, if I, you know, round that corner off, there's going to be barely anything left of the wood. So we'll have the fillet in there, right? So I'm going to round the corners off. <clears throat> like I said, doing that. Um... I'm just going to go over to the sander. I'm not going to put radius gauges on these things. Like I said, this is just a demonstration of how to do the box. That's what that's what the main purpose was today, but I figured we'd make something while we're doing it. All right, so, you know, a couple ways you could do it. Block plane, real nice. You know, you just run that back and forth and just, you know, round it, okay? Um, like I said, I'm just going to go take it over on the sander, buzz them. I, I, you know, I've been doing it so long, like I said, I'll be able to make the radius as good enough where, you know, it'll probably be pretty much the same the whole way around, okay? So it, I finished up the, um, like, rough sanding the handle, okay? Like I said, this one, we're just going to make a flat back handle. We're just going to glue it on here, okay? And like I said, it's kind of a lazy way to do it. One of these days, I'm going to make a real nice one of these things, make a nice round handle the way it should be. but. That's gonna take a core. All I want to do is show you how to make a box, okay? So you're probably not gonna be able to see this on camera, but it, it's pretty rough yet, okay? What I did was I cut it out on a bandsaw. I showed you how I did that, okay? And then I went over to the oscillating spindle sander, all right, and sanded it kind of roughly, um, but I got steps in it, okay? So what I do, <coughs> like I said, the sandpaper I use. Um, Back in the old days, uh, the, you know, my German foreman and I say, try to teach me to be the best craftsman. So what I want to do, you know, with you guys, that's the goal here, okay? Um, like I said, we, we did the hand tools, hand planes, uh, chisels, gouges, a lot of places. Now you take a chisel out of your toolbox, you're, you're out the door, right? So basic, the basic thing, what you want to do nowadays, you want to take as much wood off as quick as you can, okay? I, I got to survive in this business, all right? I try to do things traditionally as much as I can. One of the things I do, everybody hates sanding, okay? So what I usually do, I typically use, this is 50 grit sandpaper. That's real rough sandpaper, okay? But it, it'll get this nice and round, perfect round, instead of having the steps from the oscillating spindle sander in there. Okay, yeah, you, know, you just go ahead and start, you know, going to town here. I'll get this down to, I'll probably use like, um, I've got an old piece of 60 grit. I'm gonna use to uh, get it, okay, make a radius. Just curve your sandpaper a little bit, okay? You know, make yourself a nice radius, okay? Um, I'm going to do this whole thing in front of you, but what I do is like for sanding, like I said, the way I do it, I use this rough sandpaper because I can get the stock off as quick as I can, okay, with that. But then again, what I do is then I use the sandable primer, so you know that'll fill in all the, the rough sanding, and then I'll go ahead and sand the primer. It's, it's way easier to sand the primer than it is to sand the wood, so that's just the way I do it. It's yeah, not traditional in that. But, you know, like I said, I got to make some money in this business too. So some of the things I, I got to, you know, go ahead and do that. That's the easiest way. So I'm going to go ahead and finish seeing this thing up. We'll glue it on and I'll show you um, 
I, I show you how to do the fillets. If you haven't shown, I'll, I'll do a little fillet rubbing real quick. And, um, you know, make sure you guys know how to do that. Okay, be right back. Okay, guys, I got this uh, handle pretty much where I want it right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the guys that haven't, uh, you haven't seen yet, I just get regular auto bundle. Okay, uh, let me see this tool. Okay, the tool I got... Okay, see that? And I got all different kinds of sizes, okay? I just found a piece of, uh, it's actually stainless steel, like a stainless steel sheet. I think I got it at a scrap yard somewhere. And you just, just lay it out. Dividers, you know, I just, I figured I might as well put two different radiuses on different sides, okay? And you sand them out on a sander. If you don't have a sander, you know, grinder, whatever you got, okay? So just take a little bit, a uh, little dollop of the, um, uh, you guys that don't know how to do the bondo, you take a little dollop of uh, the plastic, okay, you get your hardener. Alright, I didn't need it, you should need this first. Alright, put a little bit of that on there. And if you don't know, I'll just tell you, uh, warmer, more humid it is out, the less hardener you put in because this, this goes off quick. Alright, we're still, we're, we just hit springtime here in Cleveland so it's uh, you know it's not that warm out just yet okay so all you do is you take it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bottom part first okay just take a little dollop of it on your your uh, tool and then you just wipe it in there okay and since this is not um, it's not anything precision or anything um, if you're doing something a little more you know, you're making a pattern for a customer. There is a little bit of a trick to doing this and using these tools. All right, to get a true radius, you got to keep it 90 degrees. Okay, you got to keep it straight up and down to get that straight. So if I tilt this, you know, it opens up that radius a little bit more. And like I said, this is just a demonstration for you guys. Okay, so I'm not, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, another trick to this stuff is, and like I say, so you new guys, um, you know, take, it, it takes a while to learn how to do this. Okay, don't expect to get out and start wiping perfect fillets right off the bat. Okay, there, there is a little art to it. Okay, now the biggest thing is, like once you start these, don't work this too much, okay? Just just wherever it is, leave it. If you got a big clump somewhere, leave it. You can take a chisel, chisel it off, okay? Just try not to work this up too much. All right. If you got to put more on, put more on later down the road, okay? And then the way I do it, I got the two sides there, okay? And I didn't try to do the, the other sides because you end up mushing so we'll just do these two sides let it harden then I'll get the ends and then I'll get the four corners all right now you see this excess right here on the outside too just leave it let it harden but you don't want to let it harden all the way it'll be a little bit rubbery just take a knife carve it out of there or chisel or some, something you just take this scrape it out if these are you know beefy enough this is pretty beefy but I'll just probably take a chisel to this and um, scrape those out but just let it harden first that way if you run into that fillet that you just put in you're not gonna make any mess on there okay and while I'm doing this too if you remembered I put nails in the end got a little bit left left the nail hole in there you know fill your nail holes up Okay, that's the nice thing about powder making. Now this stuff is already, this is hard already. This went off pretty quick. Got a little too much hardener in here. Okay, so here's here's what I do. I just, I got a little chisel that I use for everything. All right, so I'll just get in there. I don't know if you can see this. Like I said, my cameraman left. Just, just scrape this stuff out. Okay, that's all you got to do. Real easy. Okay, and uh, like I said, just wait, wait for the stuff to semi-hard a little bit. That way, if you bump that, that fillet, you don't ruin it. You don't have to go over it again. Okay, 
So one, one thing we try to do is just do it once, right? Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and finish rubbing all these fillets in or wiping all these fillets in. Okay, and then after we get the fillets done, like I said, we'll have some strength in the corners. They'll actually be pulling the corners out a little bit, so I'll be able to take take the stock off on the outside and we'll, we'll be good. All right, and then we'll put the handle on and that's our ingot mold. We'll be able to take it down to the foundry and uh, make some ingot molds out of this. All right, be right back, guys. Okay, guys. Like I said, today I uh, just wanted to show you how we make a box. You know, just start out with that block. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a rectangular box, square block. When I was at Aero Aluminum, we made tons of housings, tons and tons of housings. And yeah, that's basically how we, you know, got started doing them and that. All right, so here's the uh, finished product here. I got a little bit more to go, uh, sanding and painting and all that stuff. But like I said, we just did a quick flat back. You know, down the road, we'll do a nice rounded handled one and everything. You know, the purpose today was just to show you how to make the basic box. All right, and that handle still, still just glued that on a bit ago. All right, so um, I'll try to show you the guys um, the cast iron one my cast iron foundry buddy he, he's like so overwhelmed right he's way 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 behind with stuff so he's not going to touch this thing for months probably you know big deal like i said I basically just wanted to show you how we make you know accurate shapes okay um we'll, we'll get some more like i said as i get more and more stuff in finally got that cylinder job i'm going to start on that i had the drawing last week but uh, doesn't have enough information on it, so he sent me a casting. So that's going to be kind of interesting too. I'll show you how to, um, you know, get information from the casting. You know, uh, when there's not enough information on a drawing. So that's kind of a neat thing where we're we have to engineer things and that. All right. So it, you know, the personal stuff, guys, too. The injury. I, I just. Yeah, I'm not asking for sympathy, anything like that, or anything. I just I'm trying to teach people. Don't be lazy like I was. I did something. I was trying to be lazy. You know, do it the right way. Drop the tailgate, climb in, get the stuff out. Okay, it cost me. I, I mean, I'm still hurting to this day. So just I'm just trying to do these as teachable moments. Okay, I'm not like I said, not asking for sympathy or anything like that. You know, so just teachable moments. So. Um, like I said, I'll try to keep these up. We got a little bit behind because of uh, really wasn't feeling good, still not. So um, we'll try to keep things going. Definitely, uh, when I get going on the cylinder, I, I really want to show you guys how to do that split uh, cylindrical pattern. That that's a, a real cool uh, way to do things in that. So uh, thanks for this long video again today, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around. You know, hopefully, uh, you guys learned something today. Uh, if you guys need to know something, just give me a, you know, write it up and, and send a question in. I, I'll be happy to share some more information that you need, need you know, a little quicker than I can get to. So, if you guys got a question, do it. If uh, I said again, I hate asking people to um, subscribe, but if you can, I'd really appreciate it. Like I said, I don't want to stick around for a long haul. All right, so have a good one out there, guys. Hey guys, just got to show you this one thing here too. Nothing biggie, but a personal thing. But this is why it's hard to get stuff done in a small shop here. You get the crew just lazing around. So that's Finn. He's the baby. Finn's four, four Finn. He's a 130 pound chocolate lab. That's the old guy over there. That's Seamus. Seamus is about 13, I think, something like that. And then this guy here, right in front of my bench, that's Ranger. Ranger's eight. He's a good guy. He's got some uh, medical issues, though, unfortunately. He's kind of a cripple. He has a hard time getting around, so hopefully he'll be around a little bit. But these are my shop boys. And... Uh, Guys, I got to step over all the time there.